Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 15. Life is medicine. How do you want to live your life and truly live it? Um, And really looking at all of those aspects of your life and where can you make small, small changes like adding a glass of water or adding 15 minutes of movement in the middle of your day um, to really change it so that your life is your medicine. (laughs) Well, I am thrilled to welcome back to the show Dr. Jenna Jorgensen who's an amazing naturopathic physician. And last time uh, you were here, we talked about that we are all fat deficient, (laughs) healthy fat deficient. Uh, We talked about the keto adaptive detox program, which it's not just for weight loss. Correct. (laughs) And, uh, And then we got to know a bit more about what it's like to be a resident, a naturopathic resident, and the importance of thinking holistically for our health and you know if you have a doctor make sure they're thinking holistically because you don't want them just treating a symptom rather than you know get get the oil change every three to six months and then you want to replace the engine precisely yeah <laughs> so you 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 teased me by mentioning at one point oh yeah i could tell you about how to do a, a naturopathic first aid kit And I got really, really, really excited. So I've wanted to have you on the show for months now. (laughs) So I think, and I think the conversation started by me asking you, what is your favorite herb and why? Yes. I remember that conversation and I instantly shouted out golden seal. Specifically, I think your question was something like, if you got stranded on a desert island, what would you want to bring? (laughs) Okay, fine. Well, well, I'll ask that question now. It's on my list. Oh, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I can't believe you remember that. It's awesome. It's the keto adaptive program. It, it, yeah, you're just like it's you. All the ketones are feeding your brain. Yes. I think we all need to be on the keto. If you're if you're not thinking clearly, it's because you need to be on the keto adaptive program. If you didn't listen to the last episode that Jenna was on, go back and listen to it. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Um, okay. Well, then I will <laughs> ask you my. My my fun but crazy question. So you're stranded on a deserted tropical island. All right. Now you can bring your dog who's actually in studio <laughs> with us. So if you hear like this weird like licking sound, it's not me. It's this gorgeous dog that Jenna has, her her furry um, child. And um, so you're, you're allowed to bring your dog and your husband with you. Right, because it's not like this sad Perfect. tropical island. It, right? it would but, be really sad without Indian Zach there with me. I know. So, but you get to bring your family. And, uh, but there's nothing else is there's no civilization. So three things you get to bring from your medicine cabinet. What are they and why? Um, so I think the, the first thing that jumped to my mind, uh, the first time you mentioned this question to me, uh, was the herb golden seal. Um, and golden seal is my equivalent to an antibiotic. It's, it's a very, it's antimicrobial in the the whole. It's antiviral. It's anti uh, parasitic. It's it's antibacterial. It it kind of shifts more on the antibacterial side of things, um, but it's just overall a wonderful wonderful herb. And it's also really bitter, so it's a really good thing for stimulating digestion. And particularly if there is a bacterial infection in your digestive tract, um, it's going to be a really good herb for that. Um, and I was thinking about this a lot, actually, and it would be hard to say what form of that herb I would want to bring. Um, there's powdered golden seal that's really good for packing wounds and things like that. Um, and there's there's tinctures, which would last longer. And then there's capsules, which are probably the easiest thing to take. So I'm just going to generalize it and say that all golden seal, all golden seal <laughs> would be would be uh, one of my go to's for that. Um, and the second thing would be, uh, bentonite clay, I think. Um, so it's, it's one of those things where it has so many different purposes, um, in that you can put it on topically, like if you have a burn or a bug bite or something like that, it's an inert uh, substance. So it sucks things out. It, it doesn't have properties of its own, so it sucks properties from other places. So if you put it on a burn, it's going to suck that heat out of the burn. And so it's going to make that heal faster. Same with a bug bite. It's going to make, it's going to make it less reactive. 
And then internally, it's really good for grabbing onto things internally. So again, if you had some sort of um, GI infection, it's going to help bind onto that and pull it out. Similar with any type of, of toxicity, it's going to act as a fiber in a sense where it's grabbing onto things and pulling them out. Um, and it's also very cooling in general. So if I'm on a, a very warm island, it would be a good thing to just, have. Just go mudding. Yeah, Take exactly. Take like a mud bath. <laughs> Um, and the third thing, uh, I, it was a, it was a tough call between a homeopathic uh, arnica and kinesio tape. So, and I think I would go with kinesio tape because not only can it function for your health, it also is tape. So it would be really <laughs> useful. To I'm gonna have. make a shelter out of this. Exactly, exactly. So, I, um, I would go with kinesio tape, which is a it's a stretchy form of kind of physical therapy tape. Um, that really helps, depending on how you use it, it helps support structures or it helps hold structures in place if you sprain or strain them. And you can also tape it in a way that um, uh, will pull inflammation out of an area. So if you were to sprain your ankle, you'd be able to tape it so that um, your ankle would be able, the lymphatic system would be able to drain that inflammation so that you would be able to move a little bit better. I actually found this fascinating. I was looking up uh, kinesio tape, uh, tape and the doctor who invented it's a chiropractor mm -hmm. in Japan mm -hmm. who wanted to see more results in between sessions so in between uh, chiropractic adjustments mm -hmm. and when he uh, started taping people uh, so if you have never seen taping before it's it's like when you've seen the um the Olympic athletes yep. and there's this like neon colored tape on their body and you're like what, what are that was that uh, but that's what it is and it, it mm -hmm. it's really interesting mm -hmm. so so ha have you seen have you used uh, kinesio taping in your practice and have you seen results with it? Absolutely. Um, I I got trained in the kinesio taping method when I was in school um, and I'm really glad that I did because you can throw kinesio tape on just about anyone and they, they should feel better right away if it's taped correctly. So you have this kind of switch of like, does that feel better? Okay, great. It's, it's, it's helping. Um, and I've used it all the time. My husband plays soccer recreationally and he'll roll an ankle or something oh. and, and I'll tape his ankle and it's usually back to good to go by the next day. Oh, really? um, well, what, and what about people with uh, deeper issues like arthritis? Arthritis, um, what it does with arthritis is kind of, um, it can stabilize joints a little bit more. So if there's any part of that joint that's not stable, that's contributing to the inflammation, it can help to stabilize. And it can also um, kind of work to remind the body to pay attention to that area. So when you have this gentle tape on, say you have arthritis in your knee, if you have this gentle tape around that area, the body is constantly going to have this reminder of like, oh, I need to be working here. Um, so that that's another way that I, I look at the use of kinesio tape is as a reminder. Can you, could you use it for something uh, like headaches or I guess if it's a tension headache or how, what other ways would you use it? <laughs> um, a headache. Yeah. If it was a tension headache, you could totally, totally use it for that. Um, anywhere there's inflammation. So in pregnancy, women's oh, uh, lower like extremities <laughs> um, tend to swell up. Yeah. Um, and so you can use what's called the fan method. And it, it my, my favorite description of the way this tape is cut was by my uh, four-year-old neighbor who called it an octopus. So it's it's like a, you have a, a fan type of um, setup where the, the legs of the octopus are um, strong stretch so that when they pull back, they drain the the swelling towards the lymphatic system. So it just helps pull that out. So anyone who's having issues with lymphatic drainage, it works really well for that. So pregnant women, um, anyone who's had uh, surgery where their lymph nodes have been taken out, particularly breast cancer patients, um, the arm that the lymph nodes are taken out of doesn't drain quite as well. So you can use this to help that drainage process. Wow. So that really is the number three thing to have in the, yeah. in the all natural <laughs> first aid kit. Well, so, 
so you know, I mean, spring's around the corner, so su- summer is coming up. <laughs> yes. And uh, so we typically see sunburns and mosquito bites. Um, mm-hmm. What else would you add to your all-natural medicine cabinet? So definitely a, a homeopathic kit. <laughs> There's a lot of homeopathics that work really good for acute situations. So um, for instance, when I go out hiking, I have this really great small um, uh, first aid kit from REI that I took out some of the things that I knew I wouldn't use and put in all of my homeopathics um, that we use regularly for acute situations. Um, some of the bigger ones would be Arnica for bruising, sprain strains, um, um, uh, Ruta graviolens also for tendon strains. Um, uh, Cantharis would work really well for sunburns. There's there's a whole list of <laughs> of homeopathics um, that I would have in that in that kit. Big ones are the the golden seal, the uh, bentonite clay, um, kinesio tape, and homeopathics would be the main places that I would go. You could potentially also look at some essential oils. Lavender topically um, is really helpful on burns, um, so that's something that I would I would go to as well. Is there anything we can do to have mosquitoes not like us? Like there is really B vitamins. Really? Yes. So when you are chock full of B vitamins, you smell bad to mosquitoes, so they don't want to bite you. On the flip side of that, if you're constantly getting bit by mosquitoes, maybe you're a little B vitamin deficient Mm. and you should go see your naturopath. (laughs) That's interesting because I've been camping before where like one of my friends is just covered in mosquitoes and we're looking at them like, what? I'm two feet away. Like, why is the the mosquito eating me? I was that person (laughs) (laughs) on many occasions growing up. (laughs) I no longer am. (laughs) That is really cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, so uh, getting, getting, you know, the advice from a naturopath, what, what should we have in our house? Like what, what are the top things that everyone should have in their, in their household? Yeah, that's a great question. I could probably go on. It's, it's like a rabbit hole. It could be like, well, if you have this, maybe you should have this too. This is my, um, um, I, I'm scheming to get you on another episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, in our first episode, we talked about castor oil packs. Castor oil, again, is one of my favorite things to use in an acute situation because it's so anti-inflammatory when it's used topically. So that is one of the things that I have everyone uh, get at some point in time if they're my patient. Um, So anything that that is tender, sore, if you've got a tendonitis, if you've got a sprained ankle, you can throw some castor oil on it, sleep on it, um, and generally it'll feel better in the morning. Um, so that that's one thing. And um, also, as I mentioned with the first aid kit, a homeopathic kit that has, you know, 15 to 20 remedies of the most common acutely used remedies would be really great. At Emerald City Naturopathic Clinic, we have an on-call phone, so we talk to people at all hours of the day. who are in acute situations and wanting naturopathic care and it's really helpful for us if if you have a homeopathic kit and some castor oil and really towels and water because we use a lot of hydrotherapy the castor oil and then homeopathics because those are easy things that people can have at home that we can instruct them on on what they need to be doing with that um, so again, the, the hydrotherapy, so having a big bowl that you could easily have hot or cold water in and towels that, that, um, aren't ginormous <laughs> that are easily accessible, um, to use for hydrotherapy. Um, those are, are definitely things, um, other things that I think of, um, would be some sort of general antimicrobial supplement. We talked about the golden seal, but um, you can also get a supplement that has vitamin C, vitamin A, a lot of antimicrobial herbs all in one um, so that you have something. So this, the moment you start to get sick, you can start taking something. Well, and that's a good question. What do you, so you're about to come down with a cold. Do you like mm-hmm. wake up in the morning, you've got that like, eh, you know, feeling and what do you do? Uh, so you take some vitamin D, you take some vitamin C, and you start on that antimicrobial supplement that I just described, and um, you do that pretty aggressively throughout the day. Um, I, I if if I'm just barely feeling it, I'll do it at least three times during the day. Um, 
And then if I'm really feeling it, I do it every two to three hours. You have to be pretty aggressive with the dosing. And then that night, the, the key to all of this is um, the hydrotherapy piece at the end of the day. So, or if you're staying home, you could do it, but it works best if you're doing it right before bed. Um, and it's it's called the warming socks treatment. Um, it used to be called the cold wet sock treatment, and that just <laughs> sounds awful. So we changed it to the warming sock treatment. And basically what you do is you take a really hot bath, and if you want to get it even warmer, Warmer, you put Epsom salts in it, which would be another thing that I would recommend having on hand in your house. Um, put some Epsom salts and some fresh ginger. And what that does is it dilates the blood vessels so you get really warm, you start sweating, you, you're creating a, an artificial fever, essentially. Um, and then as soon as you get out of that really hot bath, you um, put on socks that prior to the bath, you put, you got them soaking wet and you put them in the freezer. And then when you get out of the bath, you put those socks on and you put a second layer of wool socks over them and you go to bed. And generally what this does is it um, creates a, a reflex in the body to heat the body up. So then you create another artificial fever. And fevers are the one of the body's ways of creating an inhospitable environment for any type of microbe. And so it just gives the body more tools to, to fight off whatever that, that bug is that's trying to invade. Um, and I generally recommend that you do the warming socks three nights in a row for the best benefit. You might not feel a whole lot of difference the first night. You'll start to feel it after the second night, and by the third night, you'll be good to go. And I would add, don't take Tylenol. Yes. With that, because Tylenol stops the, the, the cycle of creating yeah. a fever. Yeah. So fevers are, they're, they're, they're good until they get too high. Um, and then at that point, you want to have a, a doctor on board to help you navigate that with whatever's best for, for you as an individual. Um, but, but up until about 104.5, you, you want to support that fever and help your body with because it. Because viruses or bacteria can't live in that environment. So it's like, you're cooking them. Yes. But we're not cooking. Exactly. <laughs> I, I like it. I mean, I'd rather cook a virus than um, feel sick for two weeks or, yes. or, or cook a <laughs> bacteria than take a drug. Yes. And I guess another thing I would add to that is rest and hydration. Um, this doesn't really work that well if you uh, plan a very busy schedule and then uh, just do this at night. So right. <laughs> letting yeah. your body put resources towards fighting off of the infection is a, a really good thing to do. Now, how much, so for an average bath, how much um, Epsom salt should someone put in? Um, more than you think. So I do at least four cups in a bath, um, which a lot of times when you buy like the fancy Epsom salts in the store, it's they so come in tiny. like a little, a little package of like two ounces or something like that. And that does nothing other than right. probably smell good. Um, but you want to you wanna make it a really concentrated bath so that the magnesium in those Epsom salts can really seep in and dilate those, those blood vessels. This also works as a detox method. There you go. Mm -hmm. Costco, by the way, sells it by the box. So I buy a box of Epsom salt mm -hmm. uh, and I put an entire bag in because I've got this really big bathtub mm -hmm. and uh, I just love it. I know, but I didn't know about the ginger. So what, just like stand over the bathtub with my root of ginger and, a, <laughs> and like grater and just like grate the ginger into the bathtub? You, you could do it that way. I recommend what I do is I have like a, a nut milk bag, which is essentially a really fine mesh bag that you use to make nut milks. Um, and I, so I just cut, chop the ginger up really fine or, or shred it into that and just put that in the tub. And that way I'm not having the ginger floating there with me in in the bathtub <laughs> um would ginger powder work the same um it probably would but I, the fresh ginger just is that much more potent it's got all of the the um the essential oils are still in that in that root and so it just makes it that much more strong this sounds like a lot of fun it's great yeah so if you're feeling like you're getting sick well, just keep a keep a pair of socks frozen in the in the in the freezer, just <laughs> on hand. And, and they do, you do have to let them thaw a little bit because they get molded into whatever shape you put them into the freezer <laughs> faster than you would imagine. Um, so generally, I I take them out and let them sit for a little bit. Yeah, while well, you're in your bath. <laughs> yeah, creating your sweat. Cool. So, um, do you have anything? You know, you've got this awesome dog. 
and I've got cats. What do you have anything naturopathic that you'd recommend keeping in the house for animals? Of really good food. So with with animals, if you look at um, I, I'm I'm a dog person, so I know a lot about dogs and not as much about cats. But I would imagine They're just like the same. Small dogs. <laughs> Um, but with dog food, the, the cheaper the dog food, the more cautious you want to be with it. And, and, um, particularly the dry kibble dog food, I, I once heard that they, in order to make it into that, they have to attach everything to a carbohydrate. So it's a really high carb form of food for, for the, the dog, um, and so what we do, we do a freeze-dried food that we rehydrate overnight, and it's essentially meat and vegetables. And our dog loves it. Indy goes nuts over it. Um, and, I mean, we are what we eat, right? That goes for every single living creature that eats things. <laughs> um and so we've just noticed with him that his fur is incredibly soft. His skin is really healthy. He just turned nine years old. You wouldn't know it by looking at him. He looks about three. Um, and his demeanor is just really calm and, and happy. Like, when we feed our cats beef, so like uh, canned beef, they get aggressive and mm -hmm. um, they will bite us. Like it's just really weird. They're very calm cats normally. And when we feed them uh, salmon or, or chicken, uh, they just mellow out. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really interesting to see because if we, we ignore our symptoms a lot of the times, we'll eat McDonald's, we'll drink lots of Starbucks, mm -hmm. and we sort of don't listen to our, our, our health. But when it comes to our animals, yes. <laughs> we'll do anything for, <laughs> our, for our little furry babies. Absolutely. And, uh, and so just uh, because they're getting 100% of their nutrition from one source, whereas mm -hmm. we get our nutrition from... You know, a bunch place. of places. We go to restaurants. We go to you know grocery store. Go to our friend's house, uh, so we can accidentally get vitamins mm -hmm. and and minerals into mm -hmm. our into our life at times. Um, but our pets don't. So you can really see the difference that quality of food plays in our health through our animals. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the other thing that I would recommend having on board, especially if you have a particularly anxious animal, um, Rescue Remedy, which is a, a flower essence. It's similar to a homeopathic, um, and it's really easy just to put a few drops in their water, and it really works to calm them down. Um, Indy really doesn't like when we move, um, so we put Rescue Remedy in his in his water anytime that we're we're moving. Um, and actually, also acupuncture works amazing on pets really? for anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. So, is Rescue Remedy like a, a Bach flower remedy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it's a combination of of five Bach flowers. Got it. And mm -hmm. so you could probably pick that up a you know yeah any group, health food any store health food store that sells bach flower remedies <laughs> yeah yep. very cool and then just for those who don't know bach flower remedies versus homeopathic what what is the difference there's there's not a huge difference in that they're both really really diluted forms of the original substance bach flowers are only made from flowers whereas homeopathy can be made from anything um and i tend to think of it as bach flowers are more on the mental emotional side of things and uh, homeopathics can be mental emotional but i think of them more as a complete picture of the person as well as acute physical things going on with them yeah, to me, it's just like magic because when I was pregnant, I was so sick in my first trimester, I could hardly move. And a uh, naturopath recommended I take uh, a homeopathic and I, I didn't believe it would work because I was I was had a migraine. I had fevers. I was dizzy. Uh, it was the, the sickest I've ever been. And I, and I ate sushi in Mexico. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like really bad. And uh, after less than 10 minutes of taking a homeopathic, my, all my symptoms cut down by 90% mm -hmm. uh, and, then, and then began to fade away. And I just had to keep on the homeopathics in my first trimester. And it was like a miracle. So yeah. I'm, I'm on board. Yeah. I, homeopathics absolutely. have amazed me from the moment I learned about them. Um, I, I still don't know exactly how they work. I don't know if anyone really knows exactly how they work. Um, however, if I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't discriminate. If I see something work, I'm going to use it. And if, if I can give it to my dog who has no idea that I'm giving it and see a difference, that tells me something. <laughs> at, at four in the morning when my baby is teething and I've given him a homeopathic and he immediately stops crying, immediately stops crying. I'm like, 
it works. I don't care how yeah. it works. It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> magic exists. Let's just let's just say exactly. magic exists. That's awesome. Well, you know, we've been talking sort of about natural medicine versus medical doctor and drug medicine. If is there a medication out there you wish, or a, 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 a several medications out there you wish no one would take? Like if a patient came in and they're on something, you would immediately help them get off of. So is there a medication you wish no one would take, and what would the alternative be? That's a great question. And I mean, because I'm a naturopath, I work, I look at each person really individualized, and medications have been made for a reason. They all have a purpose, whether or not... Um, it's doing more harm than good is really up to that person. So um, I don't think that I could say that there's any one medication that I would be absolutely you need to be off of that, even if it's a um, something that as simple as the person is holding on to that saying this is what's helping me. Um, it would be a very slow process of like, okay, let's let's build them up from beneath it so they don't feel like they need that anymore and take that take that out. Um, I guess one of the things that I think about though, just in general that most people don't need to be on, there are exceptions to this, would be a proton pump inhibitor, which is antacids for people who have heartburn. Um, so with heartburn, what's what happens 95% of the time is that um, when our stomach acids are too low, they don't trigger the, the, the sphincter at the top of the stomach to close. And so what happens is that sphincter stays open and then those, even though they're low, they're still stomach acids, they can splash up into the esophagus and they cause heartburn. And our most common conventional treatment for that is to give somebody an acid that is going to decrease those stomach acids even further and just keep that problem going. Whereas if we increase those stomach acids, then that sphincter gets triggered to close and then, oh, they don't have heartburn anymore. Um, that that being a general scenario, but that's one of the ones that oftentimes when I see someone come into my office who's who's on that, um, I I have a, a good conversation with them about let's try some alternatives to that. And my favorite alternative um, to that aside, two things really that go with that. One would be a digestive enzyme that has some hydrochloric acid in it and is going to help you digest your food. Um, and the other is. Um, Deglycerinated licorice root, which is Ooh. really um, they they make them in all sorts of delicious chewable tablets. Um, and what licorice root does is it um, coats all the mucosa of the digestive tract, and so it 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 makes it so that the acid doesn't damage it as much, and it soothes that area and heals that area. Right. So I would rather get someone doing that while we address where their stomach acids really are at um, than continuing to make the problem worse. I love I love your suggestion of the the deglycerinated licorice. Uh, would you how how would you recommend they take that in a tincture form um, in like the candy or like the tar? Yeah, I I like to take it um, just in the the little tablets, chewable tablets, um, just because when you chew it, it mixes with the the amylase and the saliva, and that just makes even more of a gooey substance going all the way way down. If a capsule really wouldn't do it, because the issue is before the stomach, which is going to break down that that capsule. Um, and tinctures have alcohol in them, which can be a little bit irritating mm. to to those symptoms as well. Sure, licorice is black licorice licorice is one of my favorite herbs um it's an herb right yes. okay <laughs> in my it's, mind it's a it's candy a root. <laughs> it's a root. there you go but um no because i i've been recovering from chronic adrenal fatigue and mm -hmm. so you know that is in my tincture blend mm -hmm. um longevity has a line of herbal tinctures called good herbs and then the adrenal um support there's the licorice but my understanding is that licorice helps to extend the cortisol Mm -hmm. in the body so that's the hormone that's sort of the energy hormone the opposite of the melatonin yes um and so it's like hey it's giving me more energy i love this this is my favorite herb <laughs> <laughs> and then um when i was a teenager i was uh go i mean you know we're all hormonal when we're teenagers but i my boyfriend broke up with me i was depressed i saw a nature path and she got me on licorice to as a mood elevator um mm -hmm. and and for i guess it also helped extend my cortisol but uh, it, it completely helped me get over the breakup. 
Yeah. And I don't know if that was, um, you know, psychosomatic, but I just remember <laughs> I would take the licorice and I'd feel amazing. I'd be like, screw that, screw, screw that guy. I'm going to get over this. So I just love licorice. Yeah, it's so a it, really fantastic herb. It does more than just coat the the stomach. Yes, yes, yeah. um, and really the 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 deglycerinated um, is is a big piece to that for coating the stomach. the The main opposition to licorice is that it can cause high blood pressure, which I I have yet to see it do. However, um, when you deglycerinate it, um, it won't do that. So you can take as many of those tablets as you want. Um, But yes, it's a really big adrenal and it's actually antimicrobial as well. Oh, there you go. So it's in a lot of antiviral supplements. Okay. Well, let's now is there a brand um, that you like over the other brands? Is there one brand in particular? Um, for the, the tablets, I tend to lean more towards the integrative therapeutics Rhizonate. They have a German chocolate flavor that's oh. really delicious. Oh, German chocolate. <laughs> Sign me up. Okay, I think that should be in all of our medicine cabinets. Excellent. <laughs> I absolutely agree with you about, about not uh, prescribing antacids and or at least helping people increase their digestive Mm -hmm. capabilities so they no longer need them yeah um what else would be a drug that you would absolutely wish no one would be on and help them get off of um i think one of the things that i i help people get off of or kind of switch their thought process around using would be nsaids for pain relief um because we have a lot of herbals that can do the same thing um white willow bark is is kind of the alternative to that Um, and it actually breaks down into salicylic acid which is the same as aspirin so it just does it a little bit farther down the digestive tract so you don't have the issues with potentially causing um, uh, harm to the stomach which is is the big issue stomach and liver with a lot of the NSAIDs so white willow bark doesn't um, harm the liver which I think Mm -hmm. isn't that the main you know concern about someone who's chronically on uh, painkillers yeah, yeah. Um, it takes a little bit longer for it to kick in, um, but if if you're used to using it and you're you're willing to wait without having that bad side effect, um, then then it's really worth using. And oftentimes I combine that with turmeric or curcumin, which is a a, a compound in turmeric um, that's really anti-inflammatory because really most pain is coming from inflammation. So let's get up the cause rather than masking our body's signal that pain is happening. Let's figure out why the pain is there and let's get rid of that um, so that you're ultimately healthier. I'm on board. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. You've been really busy with a lot of patients the last two years and and you do a lot of education, patient education. Mm -hmm to help them start thinking holistically. What question do you wish your patients would ask you? Ooh, that's a really good question. (laughs) Um, I guess I would, I would have to say something along the lines of, um, what can I do to support myself without having to buy a lot of supplements or outside supplements, medications, over-the-counter drugs? What can I do to support myself um, just in my life? That would be my ideal question from a patient because I could talk for hours (laughs) about alternative things that they could do. I'm starting to smell (laughs) another time that you'll be on the show. (laughs) That is a really great question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What yeah. Can, what can I do in my life to support my mm-hmm. health? What, yeah. what, what changes can I make? Yeah. So what are the major changes? I mean, I know I don't want to keep you here for hours. No, I actually do. <laughs> but what what's some like three major changes that you wish everyone would do in their life? Um, so the first one would be getting movement in their day every single day, the whole 30 minutes, three times a week. No. Don't, don't be gerbils at the gym? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Get movement into your life every single day, whether that's going for a walk, whether that's going to the gym, whether it's going for a hike, whether you ride your bike to work. That's what I do because I'm I'm a busy doctor, resident doctor, and I don't have time and I don't I don't do well in gyms, so um, I ride my bike in the rain in the dark. So I'm <laughs> um, getting movement every single day. Um, loads, loads of benefit there. Um, the second thing would be drinking water. Um, it, 
most people are dehydrated. A lot of what we eat and a lot of what we drink regularly is actually dehydrating. So things that hydrate are water, herbal tea, and, and green tea to an extent. So getting all of those things in, um, at least a third of your weight in, in ounces um, of water, if not more than that, would be, would be the second thing that I would recommend. Um, and then the last thing is, is focusing on a whole food diet. If you're not ready to jump into the keto adaptive, high fat, low carb, that's okay. But a whole food, focus on organics um, and really knowing where your food comes from and eating real food. I love Michael Pollan's um, saying of eat food, not too much, mostly plants. It's brilliant. (laughs) Um, At least half your plate should be vegetables with every meal Um, and not just carrots and potatoes. Um, Green leafies. Yeah, if it's a (laughs) If it's a root vegetable, you know, limit that. Right? Yeah. Because I think it's funny that people think French fries are vegetables. Yes, they don't count. <laughs> it's not colorful. Yeah, yeah. So nourishing yourself with healthy, healthy organic food, getting movement and hydrating yourself. Um, if you do that, you'll have to see your doctor far less immediately and in the future. Jamie Oliver, I love his saying, is uh, food should not have ingredients. It should be the ingredients. Yes. <laughs> and when I shop the perimeter of uh, the local co-op, that's that's what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm aiming for. It's like, you know, if it comes in a box or a can, then yeah. you, got, you want to limit that. Exactly. The perimeter is also a really good recommendation. Just stick to the outside of the grocery aisles and mostly you'll avoid all of those those ingredients. So I think you're probably about as busy as all of our listeners. How <laughs> do you organize yourself so that you eat a, a whole food? Because I, I think that's a major complaint. It's a, besides, people might say, I can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Um, which is nonsense. You you can. Mm-hmm. You just have to, you have to get resourceful. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I, I know people on food stamps who are eating organic, gluten-free, whole, mm-hmm. whole foods. So you can do it. Um, but how do you manage to continue to eat? So what are your strategies for eating healthy even though you're super busy? Yeah. Um, in the winter, the crock pot is my best friend. I can throw a, a big grass-fed organic roast in the crock pot with some uh, onion and beet and carrot and whatever other vegetable I want and a little bit of um, homemade chicken stock or beef stock and away I go. And then when I come home at night, whatever hour that happens to be, I have dinner ready for me and it's a fully nutritive dinner. Sometimes I'll throw a handful of greens on top of it um, just to get those dark leafies in there as well. But the crock pot has been a lifesaver. Um, and also just salads. I mean, buying a big thing. You you mentioned Costco for getting organics. Mm-hmm. They have big, big tubs of organic greens for salads. Um, and if you have um, time to make a, a big bulk of either um, sautéed meat or vegetables, some sort of protein source, whatever protein source you prefer, um, and you've got salad greens, you put one on top of the other and away you go. That's That's the end of it. Um, so really trying to plan ahead to when I have time to cook, I put a whole bunch of stuff together. Um, and then when I don't have time to cook, I, I have things backed up either in the freezer or readily available that are quick and easy. Um, and the other piece to that, um, both financially and time is, um, it, particularly in the summer months, we, we sign up for a CSA. We, which is uh, stands for Community Sp- Supported Agriculture. And so you're buying produce directly from the farm. Ooh. And they some of them ship directly to your house. Some of them have drop-off points. Ours just has a drop-off point in our neighborhood. And so every Thursday afternoon, we walk up the, the hill to our drop-off point and pick up our big box full of local organic produce that we pay uh, about $28 a week for. And that that's most of our vegetables wow. for the whole week for two people. Um, and we pretty much only supplement with um, salad greens in the summer. That's how much produce we're getting. Um, and a lot of the CSAs, at least in the Seattle area, take take food stamps. 
So uh, also a really good way to get fantastic food on a on a budget. I love that. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're about to wrap it up. But first, uh, do you have a book that you would recommend our listeners read? Ooh, I have so many books on my nightstand. And <laughs> okay, it's one... <laughs> all your books are nightstand. Go. <laughs> um, you know, one of my favorites that I've come back to over and over again is Michael Pollan's The Omnivore's Dilemma. And he just talks about our food system and where our food comes from and gives really great strategies for um, choosing your food and, and where to choose it and why you should choose it. Um, just really, really insightful. I love it. I'm, I've actually haven't read that one, so now I'm oh, interested. I'll lend it to you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And then we'll lend it to everyone listening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Well, uh, to wrap it up, what what would you like our listeners to take away? What's the one takeaway, the one lesson that our listeners could take away from uh, listening today? You know, the the thing I'd like them to take away is, is again, the, the motto that I've been really jumping my entire practice off of, which is life is medicine. How do you want to live your life and truly live it? Um, and really looking at all of those aspects of your life and where can you make small, small changes like adding a glass of water or adding 15 minutes of movement in the middle of your day um, to really change it so that your life is your medicine. So you're not spending tons of money on doctor's appointments and supplements, which you would think as a doctor, I might want to keep people coming in, but I'd rather see you less often and see more people um, that are healthier than be seeing the same people over and over. That who... aren't getting results. Exactly. Right. <laughs> we're, 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 we're practicing results-based medicine. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So live your life as, a, as if it's your medicine. I love that. So we can be our own doctor. Yes, to a degree. To a degree. And then, and then we have to go to the doctor. <laughs> yes. To get the blood work and stuff. Yes. But, but you know, but making those healthy choices mm -hmm. every single day. Yeah, I love that because I can't, I don't take you home with me. You don't, you don't cook for me and walk for me, mm -hmm. you know, and meditate for me. Yes. It's, I've got to, I've got to do all the actions and mm -hmm. the doctor's just, you know, helping us steer the ship. Exactly. So. Thank you so much, Dr. Jenna, for being on our show. And I look forward to seeing your career take off and, and you help so many people. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And we'll have you back soon. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to learn from top naturopathic physicians? Go to freedoctorcourse.com and sign up for the free course that'll email you videos with tips and tricks to achieving optimal health. That's freedoctorcourse.com, freedoctorcourse.com.